Hello again, my online friend. How are you doing? If you're watching this video at the time of publishing, it means the UTME jam is like two weeks away from now. And I really am curious to know how you're doing. How has preparation been so far? So you can use the comment section, ask any question, and I'll try to check and answer as many as possible. But the reason for making this video is to share 10 things that I really think you can do that will help you maximize the last two weeks before your exam. Because I believe whatever you do now can make significant difference in your performance and your confidence at the exam. But I understand that there are going to be different categories of people watching this video. Some people are going to be well prepared like they've been studying all this while. And on the other end, I know that some people have probably not even started studying and talking. And I know there are a lot of people in between the unprepared and the prepared, which is why I'm going to say this upfront that a few of those tips might not apply to you based on the level of preparedness. But most of the other tips are general things that you could apply. I will help you maximize how you use your time for your exam okay before we get into it if this is the first time you are seeing a video from my channel you're welcome to the amazing community i'm worth i'm currently a 15 medical student of ui and i make videos about medicine admission and personal development so beyond making videos to help you prepare for jam i'm also going to guide you through the admission process so make sure you subscribe to the channel to not miss any video so Thank you and let's get into the video. Now let's go into the 10 things I really think you should be doing now that your exam is very close. Number one is to pay more attention to revision and this mostly applies to you if you've been studying all this while. If you've been studying all this while, there's a chance that there are some things you'd have forgotten, things you've read before that you've forgotten and this is normal. Forgetting is a normal thing that happens to us. If you don't use a piece of information or knowledge, you lose it. So this time is time for you to actually revise this knowledge and because you've learned this thing once before it is easier to revise it and refresh it in your memory so that in your exam you can easily answer questions at fingertip you know when you see a question and you've recently revised it to bring it back to your memory is easier than let's say the last time you read something or used the knowledge it was like six months ago it's still somewhere there but it's just more difficult to bring forth which is why you should do a lot of revision even if you are trying to read a few new topics you should also make sure you are revising so how do you revise one way to revise is by practicing past questions, which I'm going to talk about later. Practicing past questions gives you exposure to different topics. This exposure is a way to revise what you've learned. Another way to revise is by actively trying to recall those things. You can just sit down somewhere and try to recall, bring out of your memory this knowledge you've learned some months ago. And in the process of doing that, you probably realize gaps in your knowledge and you go to your textbook to check, oh, this is what I've forgotten. This is what, instead of trying to reread the old textbook, another way is by discussing with someone. Try to teach someone what you've learned some time back or try to discuss it with someone. And any of these gaps, you could easily go to your book and check it. This is not going to take as much time as it would if you are reading it all together from the beginning. Just make sure you are revising. At this time, be thinking about what you've learned and try to refresh your memory of these things. And this is also time to refresh your memory of things you memorize, like formula and things like that. Second thing to do is to learn new topics fast. And this applies to everyone and most importantly to people that have not covered a lot. So if you fall into this category, the jam syllabus is quite large. Two weeks is not enough to study all of the things. So you need to learn to study fast. Studying fast might not be as effective because effective studying takes time. But this time we are trying to savage the situation. We are trying to make the best of the time we have left. So how do you study fast? There are ways to do that. Instead of sitting down and trying to read through the old textbook and understand the old textbook, that might take time and might be quite difficult. There are other things you could do. One of the things I recommend is like watching YouTube videos. Right now, there are a lot of YouTube channels that are doing very well and I'm very happy for that. And there are a lot of Nigerian content creators or like Nigerian educators that are creating lessons based on our own syllabus. So these videos can be very valuable watch them as you're watching them try to possibly take notes from them and try to understand and after watching a particular topic don't just stop it there go to your past question try to answer questions based on that topic and see how much you've actually learned and even the past question process you could use that to expand more on that topic to learn because whoever is teaching you cannot teach you everything so from past question you could see a little more things to learn other ways to study fast is 
using notes online. If you search online, you find articles or notes that explain topics and they're very short and they're like summary. It's better to have this knowledge than not having any knowledge at all whatsoever. Another worthy mention is ChatGPT. ChatGPT is my favorite of the LLMs. It can actually teach you, it can teach you like it's a tutor. So other ways is using your friends. If you could take advantage of having friends around or tutors, if you have a private tutor, it is going to be also beneficial because they know the important things to teach you. And if you don't understand, they know the knowledge gap there is there, why you don't understand. And they can easily make you understand this thing fast than you trying to sit through the textbook and reading it all together from the beginning to the end, which might be slow and you'll probably not be able to cover a lot of things. The third thing I think you should be doing is to practice past question intensively every day from now to your exam. And there are reasons why I've always preached practicing past question. First is that it gets your brain to be used to that process of doing it. Just imagine something you've been doing every single day. Like your brain is just used to it. Oh, I know this is something I'll do. It is sharper, it is faster, and it is not stressful to do this activity that you've been doing every single day compared to when you've not been doing it. Just so you know, your exam, your real exam is just more like you're doing past questions. The question standard are very similar. The difficulty level is also similar to that of past question. So if you've gotten used to this act of study, of solving past question every day, it just makes it all the more easier on your exam day. Besides this, practicing past question is also a good way to cover a lot of topics because you're going to see plenty of topics randomized and you're going to get the chance to probably read something concerning those topics and this could actually save in your exam. What I generally recommend is at least, if you've not been doing past question, at least try, try your best to solve the last 10 years of past question. I know this is very difficult to do, but if you can do it, solve the last 10 years of past question and try to do corrections and try to understand why the correct answers are correct and also why the wrong answers are wrong. Tip number four is to prioritize high new topics. This is a tricky one because if someone has not been studying all this while, you most likely will never know what topics are high yield or not. A way to know is by practicing past questions. Maybe from the past 10 years of practice of past questions, you'll probably notice patterns and topics. Some topics are commonly repeated. If you notice these patterns, then you can start from there because there's just a lot. Like the syllabus has plenty of topics which you possibly cannot finish. And always wondering that, ah, I want to read all these topics will probably prevent you from doing anything. So it is better to focus on some topics that you think are very important. I made some videos sometimes back talking about 10 most important topics in different subjects. I'm going to link it maybe in the description. You can watch that video after watching this one. If you have confused, like if you don't know where to start from, you could start with just these topics. And then if time permits you, you could proceed to do other things. The fifth thing to do is to start taking this CBT style mock exam. Many apps already have this feature. You can download and use it on your phone. It's going to give you the exam in the time condition you will see it in the real examples. For example, I'm going to see 40 questions from each of the three subjects and I think 60 from use of the English. And then you're going to have the two hours you would normally have in the exam. I really encourage doing this a few times before your exam because it's going to help you realize how fast you can be in the exam or and it will help you see the need to probably increase your speed to probably develop strategies that will help you solve questions faster. The sixth thing to do is to start working on your speed and timing. Like I've said before, Jam will give you 180 questions and you have to spend two hours to solve all those questions. And one common complaint students make after the exam is that they do not have enough time. And I've heard quite a number of students say this, that I scored 20 in the UTME without finishing. Maybe if I had finished, I would have been able to score 320. Well, things happen, I know that. But one of the things the exam is testing is how to use your time, which is very important. It means as you've learned all this while, you should now start building how to manage your time, how to develop speed and accuracy in the exam. I'm going to make a dedicated video on this topic on how to increase your speed and how to manage your time properly in the exam or like the goal is that you finish the question, you finish all the 180 questions and still have time to cross check. Subscribe to not miss this video as this is one of the next videos I'll be posting on this channel. The seventh thing to do is to master the use of the calculator for science students. I hope you already know that 
in the exam, you will not be allowed to bring calculators from outside. And the calculator you're going to be provided with is an on-screen calculator. It's the calculator that is on the screen in the exam. And this calculator is not a scientific calculator. It's a basic, non-scientific market women calculator. What I'm saying in, in, in essence is that the calculator just have the basic functions like plus, minus, division. You are not going to find things like sine, cosine, all the trigonometric log reading. You are not going to find them there. Which means it is very important for you to memorize some things. You know, when I was preparing for my own exam, I memorized the sine, cosine and tangent of major angles because I noticed some angles were always asked. I memorized the logarithm of some common numbers. But what I noticed is that Jam is not going to ask you a question you can't do without calculator. So from practicing of past questions, you would have noticed the logarithm of what number do they normally give. And you should be able to remember this when you see it in your exam. You should be able to, without calculator, you should be able to know that, oh, the logarithm of this number is this. So if you've been using scientific calculator to practice, please stop it and start using the normal type of calculator you'll be given in the exam. Also, there are plenty math tricks I learned then. And I hope you also know some of these tricks that will make your calculation faster. The eighth thing to do is to use Stutter Block and Pomodoro Technique. So instead of spending the whole time sitting for too long trying to study and frying your brain, no, it is more effective to study short and intense. Like study for a short, intense period, take a break, mostly to work, like just get out of your study area, work a little bit, come back, study, take a break, come back, study. That's more effective than trying to sit all day long studying. There's a diminishing point where if you sit for too long, you the effectiveness of your study keeps going down. So you should make the best of your study by having, you know, intense study session and break that you take a walk or do something a little more fun. Nice thing to do is to stay healthy and manage stress. A elder brain is better than a tired one. A elder brain will be able to answer questions more quickly or be able to answer questions more accurately than a brain that is tired and stressed and you should ensure that you are as healthy as possible as you are trying to study make sure you don't burn out make sure you're actually taking some time to rest and eat you know don't be like some of us that maybe during exam that's when we eat the most ridiculous kind of food so that we are going to have enough time to study but really the better thing to do is that as you are studying make sure you eat good food make sure you have time to sleep also and try to have some fun too. Anything to do is to visualize the exam day as many times as possible before the exam. And this might seem like a gimmick, but it actually works. The goal here is to try to familiarize yourself with the exam condition as much as possible. Because our brain is more scared of novelty than something you've experienced before. Okay, an example is if you've not done something before and you're doing it, maybe for example, you've not presented in front of a crowd before. The first time you're going to stand in front of a crowd to present, you are most likely going to be scared. But after doing it first, second, third, fifth, tenth time, it will just become a normal part of you. Like standing in front of people and presenting is like a normal thing to do now. That's the same thing. You know, you are not going to have access to the exam center until your exam day, but you can actually picture the exam center especially if you've written the exam before you've written mock jam and you know the kind of setting but if not like you can also picture what the exam center is going to be like there are going to be a lot of computers you see a lot of people around you there's probably going to be code is depending on your center there are going to be people roaming around there's going to be cameras around there's going to be you and your system and there's going to be two hours and one it's questions so now you really need to start picturing imagine that okay i'm in the exam or this is how i'm going to do this this is the first subject i'm going to attend then i'm going to go to this i'm going to go to this and i'm going to try to finish before this time try to picture it the more you picture it and familiarize yourself to the environment the less scared and nervous or anxious you're going to be on the exam day yeah so that's the end of today's video i hope you genuinely found it helpful if you did please like the video and share with someone you think might also find it helpful also please subscribe to the channel it's going to mean a lot to me if you subscribe and i pray i really really pray god help you and help you through this process and strengthen you in jesus name amen i'll see you in the next one bye